What's up, people? It's your boy MM2K of Geeks, Cloud Dosage, Hard Knock Digital Culture, MM2K Gaming, you name it, I am there. And I'm back with one of these videos that <laughs> I love to do because they're designed to burst a fanboy bubble. And uh, I think we I think we, we we quite do that here. But before we get into all that, do us a huge favor. Hit that like button, hit that subscribe button and rock those bells. And when you rock those bells, please don't leave it in the hands of YouTube by selecting personalize. That's their way of letting their goofy algorithm try to pick and choose which videos you want to see. Leave the power in your own hands. Select all so you don't miss a moment of when we got content like this. All right. So what am I doing today? What are we talking about today? Well, we're this is a precursor to a podcast that we're going to do live um, associated to this video. So make sure you're there. MM2K Gaming News on um, YouTube. Check out NRO Podcast. I believe it's going to be episode 57 where we're going to be talking about this and a host of other uh, great gaming news. But our good friend Derek Strickland over at Tweak Town, and I like Derek. Um, Derek, he puts out a lot of great data and he thinks outside of the box when trying to analyze things, right? Um, the only thing that I'm a little bit impartial to, and not in a real bad negative way, um, when it comes to some of his, his articles and content, is that Derek is very, very pro Xbox, enthusiastic about xbox that's not the problem but it kind of skews how he looks at his own data in ways and how he perceives what it means um so to try to underscore and highlight that i want to show you an article that he did and i want to show you kind of like the fallout for no pun intended because this this involves xbox and it's heavily rooted in what activity happening with fallout no pun intended the fallout from what is trying to be perceived here or what is trying to be projected here. All right. The article reads, Microsoft has more best sellers. Pay attention to that. On PlayStation Store than Sony does. The article continues, Microsoft is significantly leveraging its competitor's platform to sell games, showing just how interconnected both Xbox and PlayStation really are. Um. He continues to say Sony and Microsoft may be direct competitors, but sales charts also show just how mutualistic the two companies are. So he's giving this ambiance that there's some type of symbiotic relationship here. I want you to pay attention to that. He continues to focus on this quote unquote symbiotic relationship by saying, if nothing else, the FTC versus Microsoft trial in 2023 taught us one important lesson. PlayStation and Xbox are as cooperative. <laughs> I love you, Derek, but I had to chuckle there. I'm sorry. As they are competitive. All right. So let's go to the chart, right? And he does put out some great caveats before people jump out of the window, even though he opens the window for them about, you know, fanboying about, oh, this is, you know, this shows that PlayStation gamers don't play their games. All right. Well, whatever. We'll, 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 we'll disprove that in a second. Um, he says, before we look at the data, I have to bring up some very important context points. He says, PlayStation store rankings change on a daily basis and the info provided below only reflects current standings. So this is like a dynamic chart. This is not a static chart that's there for a month or even a whole week. This changes daily, right? And so currently based upon, oh, well, let me continue reading his, his caveats. So he'll explain themselves. Listings are based upon region. And they will be different depending upon which country or region you live in. Okay. So, yeah, I mean, I don't know where Derek is at. I think he's in Canada. I could be wrong. Um, I'm in the States. So my list does look different as of today. This is a different date that I'm looking at this. This is a day later than when Derek looked at his listing on his PlayStation 5. Mine's is slightly different. Okay. Um, and I'm, I'm about to show it to you. That's why I have it on the screen. Mine's is slightly different. Um, and again, I don't know if he's looking at the same results as I am as Microsoft's or, or, or PlayStation's, uh, store data could be broken up by country or me and him could be in the same region because we're in North America. I, I don't know. 
you know what i mean but that's a great caveat that he's putting out there for people to realize when looking at this data the best sellers include free to play games like fortnite all right so yeah i again f f normally you wouldn't associate free to play with best sellers however i guess what playstation is doing is they're taking into account the amount of dlc or microtransactions that might be in there i guess right okay in addition to that um prices fluctuate and discounted games will often top the lists and or be included all right so let's take a look at the list let's take a look at this graph he has it color coded and the big important colors to pay attention to is um what's green and what's blue okay um what's green is microsoft what's blue is what's it's either first party developed by sony or which is published second party by sony it's another thing i want you to bookmark and pay attention to so when you look at microsoft games that are on playstation and who are, who make this top 25 list they are as follows call of duty overwatch 2 sea of thieves fallout 4 minecraft fallout 76 and grounded when you look at again the playstation first party developed or published by them second party they are as follows mlb the show hell divers 2 um destiny 2 stellar blade rise of the ronin so you have five games that are that fit under that litmus that i described for sony first party developed or second party published and then you have microsoft games and their microsoft is outranking them five to seven okay so now let's let's look at what it looks like today and then we're going to get into the issues with how this article was projected all right so in order for me to do that i gotta switch screens let me do that okay all right so you didn't notice that that was very seamless great all right so we're going to count first the microsoft games that are here and then we're going to count the sony games in the same fashion that derek did this is what it looks like today i'm in the, the states so this is what it looks like today in my region again it's it's ever it's just ever so slightly different all right so we got one game in call of duty we got oh oh, oh, oh before i do that i want to show you guys i'm not i didn't do anything i didn't change anything um i am it's sorted by bestseller and then i'm including playstation 4 and playstation 5 games as he would have as well all right pay close attention to that all right so we got again call of duty we got let's see here overwatch which makes two we got sea of thieves which makes three we got fallout 4 which makes four fallout 76 which makes five grounded which makes six and minecraft which makes seven so it's still seven all right so before I count the PlayStation games, I want to let you guys know that PlayStation has six games in the top 25 and ensure that you understand this is the top 25. Here's what here's what we're, we're, we're counting down to. This is Fortnite um, here and there's five blocks here. Then we're going to go five blocks down to one, two, three, four, five. That takes us to Dragon's Dogma. So anything in this row is 20 through 25. OK, so as we can see here. All those games that I counted are above this list right here, which puts them in the top 25. And we're counting this the same way Derek did. And we're going to come all the way to this line right here. And then we're going to figure out which games are in the top 25 from Sony. And again, for my count, they have six games. One, MLB The Show. Two, Helldivers 2. Uh, let's see here. Three, Destiny uh four stellar blade five rise of the ronin and six final fantasy six so there's six games to seven so there are still um seven to six microsoft games in here right all right here's 
the problem. First and foremost, I want to attack the theme of Derek's article. Derek talks as if there's, if there's some symbiotic relationship between Xbox and PlayStation. It's very good for Xbox and them trying to put games on PlayStation that look, the, you know, singularly, they are dominating the top 25 chart. That's great. That is great. But to act like there's some symbiotic relationship between them, that would mean that PlayStation's need for Microsoft games um, or is are in the same realm as Microsoft needing to put those games there. That is not the case. It's great for PlayStation to have more games on there and more games doing well. But in the court documents, I believe it was revealed that the biggest publishers even above themselves was Ubisoft and EA. So having more games in the PlayStation Store in the top 25 on a particular day <laughs> is not the flex that people are trying to make it seem like, right? And secondly, to shoot down this idea of a symbiotic relationship, we don't see PlayStation putting their games on Xbox platforms in that fashion. We don't see PlayStation games flooding even the Windows Store. So that theory is flawed. There is no symbiotic relationship. Simply put, in order for Microsoft to have a chance to, to do its strategy, they need to sell more games because frankly put, Game Pass ain't doing what it needs to do as far as outreach. And in order to keep the hopes and dreams of Game Pass still out there because Microsoft as a company really believes in subscription services so, and they want to loss lead with that and they want to sustain it as much as they can they're trying to subsidize the losses or the lack of progression Game Pass is having by putting their games on PlayStation so they need PlayStation way more than PlayStation needs Microsoft there is no symbiotic relationship Outside of maybe Call of Duty. Outside of Call of Duty, there is no symbiotic relationship. Call of Duty is a big deal for PlayStation, absolutely. But to make it seem like that the entire uh, Xbox lineup is, is, you know, feeds PlayStation and PlayStation needs the entire lineup the same way that Microsoft needs to sell these games on play, that, that's absurd. You can, make again, you can make that argument for Call of Duty, that's it. Secondly, the problem with this, even though he points this out, um, it's not focused enough in the article. This list is not longstanding. The Fallout game, look, at the very least, the Fallout games are not going to stay in the top 25. I guarantee that will drop them down to five at the very least. And then, you know, they'll, they'll have a significant number there. They'll have Call of Duty. I think Overwatch will fluctuate and be there. I, I can't speak to see if Thieves are grounded. I think Minecraft will, you know, fluctuate and be there, but the Fallout games, they are not going to remain there. This is a temporary buzz because of the series that is airing on Amazon. And we're going to talk about that in a little bit, how as far as this being as important to current gen, there's a flaw, there's a chink in that armor too, right? Next, I want to talk about the bestseller assertion. See how I stopped here at Final Fantasy 16? I had to stop here because that's where Derek stopped. He only went to top 25. 
but why why only go to top 25 why not go to top 50 or top 40 or something like normally when we talk about best sellers list when it comes to games we go to the top 50 when you go to the top 50 like it, it, even when you go to amazon they're going to they're considered video game best sellers in the top 100 when you go to like top 50 here let's count it you got god of war ragnarok that's um you know that evens it up to seven each right okay so let's make sure we go to we, we go to 50. so Fortnite one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay, so Rocket League would be the last one. Okay, so let's take a look at it. So if we continue, God of War would make it. Let, 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 let's let, let's continue with the PlayStation games first. God of War would make it seven, right? And then Spider Man would make it eight. Uh. Final Fantasy VII Rebirth would make it nine. Gran Turismo would make it 10. And yeah, so that it would be 10, right? So let's go to, let's continue and with the Microsoft games. Again, they would still have a, they, they would still add to their presence. What would add to their presence is, okay, Elder Scrolls would make it eight for them. And Call of Duty 3 would make it 9. So if we go by top 50, they're down by 1. Still a very impressive number. Again, I, it, it, it seems like that this data that Derek provides, which is accurate, is designed in a way to make what Xbox is doing seem more plausible even in a competitive realm. It's not. You are a publisher that still happens to have a console this generation, but I can guarantee you that before this first wave of games came to PlayStation, there was a high level conversation and PlayStation would have said to Xbox, look, we're all for you putting your games here but we don't we're not going to be this accommodating to competitors so what what is going on with you guys and they would have said to playstation the same thing that tim stewart said to the investors look and and, and i'm paraphrasing here we're seeing a bigger value in distributing our games everywhere including playstation so people that we would normally consider a competitor in the past, they're now part of our family. You know who that sounds like? It sounds like, again, the two biggest publishers on PlayStation, which is Ubisoft and EA. Ubisoft and EA would consider PlayStation as part of the family. That's, what, that's how publishers talk. So they need PlayStation way more than PlayStation needs them. So again, the whole symbiotic thought process that needs to be burned, <laughs> burned at the stake. It's just not happening. But I think the bigger assertions is there is no symbiotic relationship. This list is not longstanding because Fallout is not going to remain here. The bestseller associate uh, uh, assertion is flawed in my opinion. And you know, we we can we honorable mentions could be. Uh, you know, is this PlayStation 5 purchaser data? Do, do we know that? And, and then I would even argue, why are we just doing 1P and 2P for, for Sony? If we're looking at a symbiotic relationship, why aren't we including all of the deals that PlayStation would have made, whether they're publishing the game or not, to where games are only on PlayStation and they're not gonna see the light of day on Xbox? Let's look at Honkai Star Rail, which is up here in the top 25, right? Let's look at Genshin Impact, which is also up here in the top 25, right? Right. Why aren't we including those games? I'm pretty sure there's significant deals that PlayStation worked out there. So again, this assertion that there is this heavy reliance 
that is long standing between equally between PlayStation and Xbox is a farce. PlayStation does not need Xbox outside of Call of Duty. I'll give Minecraft its props in Minecraft to a, to a less significantly lesser degree. They don't need them outside of those two games, right? And what you're seeing here is a temporary bump because A, Fallout is, is popular everywhere now. They're selling it for dirt cheap. B, games like Sea of Thieves and Grounded they're new like sea of thieves just came out two days ago three days ago right or no, not not sea of thieves i'm sorry grounded came out three days ago sea of thieves is a pre-order so playstation gamers they buy games and they you know they'll readily jump to the newest thing that's coming out so when you look and see if these pre-orders their, their pre-orders are doing very well grounded just came out it's a newer game Grounded may significantly drop. I don't think Grounded is the best game out there. Sea of Thieves might stay up here. Who knows? This is not a static list. This does not statically show some symbiotic relationship. That's that's a farce. It's a farce. Don't get caught up in this hoopla. And and again, I, I love Derek. I love what he does. It's just that I, I just don't think the, the proper lens, lens is being this that ain't being viewed by the proper lens okay and i can guarantee you as cutthroat as playstation is they're not going to embrace these extra games coming unless microsoft is giving insurances that hey look we're, we're from this, this this closed system approach of trying to compete with y'all console wise because we understand the console is the bread and butter we're not trying to do that we're going on a different path you know we just happen to have devices to bolster up our subscription service. And PlayStation is like, okay. <laughs> All right. With that said, that's it from your boy. Let me know what you think about this in the comment section below. Cause like I always say, here's what I think. But if you did like what I had to say, check out the links below to follow me. They'll lead you to Geeks, Cloud Dosage, Hard Knock Digital Culture, and here, MM2K Gaming. With that said, peace. Have a wonderful gaming day.